What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Jess. I'm so sorry for being so late, but I'm here. And we're here to talk about a really, really, really important and interesting topic that we don't talk about. I do this. I do this for us. But this video alone will change the game for you. But this advice is coming from a masculine lesbian who's had mainly sexual experiences with other cis women who are also lesbian or bi or on the spectrum. And it has been a very interesting time. A lot of us need to understand the importances of the overall concept of it, how to do certain things, and I need to update a lot of my older videos. This is, this is long overdue. As usual, I use my platform to bring up subjects we don't normally talk about, and for this particular subject, we have to talk about it. I'm gonna give you what I've been through and I'll continue to give you things I've learned as I progress and hopefully help you guys out because Lord knows you some of y'all, most of y'all need this. Right now, I'm a 28 year old masculine lesbian. I have been out for over six years now. Before that, I did date men. I was, I know, I know, I don't, I don't wanna think about it hate talking about it. I knew since age six that I was gay, but because of the way I came out, it repressed a lot of those feelings and I ended up just kind of going into the closet and staying there until I was 22. During that time, and ever since I was six, I remember watching music videos, looking up anything secretive I could find as a kid, even humping some pillows to really get it out. Fast forward till I was 18, I finally decided to break my virginity to a man. It wasn't a great situation at all, but it was on some, I just had have this urge inside of me to just do that. A lot of us don't have coping mechanisms growing up to understand what that is, especially for some of us hypersexual people. And I definitely did some shit I don't regret because I don't regret anything, but I definitely wish I knew some stuff before I did that with any man. And if I knew how gay I really was, I wouldn't have done that with no man. To some of my experiences with men, it was a lot of pleasing them. I thought that that was the way it was supposed to be. I didn't know that I was supposed to also be pleased too. I didn't no ways that I could be pleased myself. A lot of positions, I did not enjoy most of everything that went down. So keep that in mind when I talk about my experiences as far as how this is for me, because it is very centered on the fact that I'm a pleaser and that's just something I'm passionate about. So fast forward 22, boom, I get with my first girl. It was really good at the time because I didn't know any better, but now that I know better, it wasn't the best. Still had the mindset of letting them do what they wanted to do, make sure that they got off because that's what I figured it still was and they were a narcissist and they had all types of things. So they took advantage of me and they preyed on that. Yeah, it was an abusive thing. It wasn't a good situation. But what I do remember doing, and knowing this is gonna be my first time with a woman, I researched. And before I go any further, this is coming from a masculine lesbian who was a cis woman as well as other cis women that I've dealt with. So learning anatomy, learning their parts, I actually took a course in college that taught me all about that stuff. I've always did my research and I also found some good videos online and show you how it is is to get down there on a woman and do the whole thing and and it was it was just everything I was learning was just like wow this is a whole new territory but it's really interesting so because I did my research I actually did a pretty decent job and then ever since then it was just experience and I'm not saying that everybody needs as nearly as much experience as I have gone through but it does help narrow down many things one knowing exactly what you like because you've experienced many things and you're like okay this is what I like and knowing that you can also be open depending on the person you have your boundaries and also knowing that every woman is different and you have to adjust based on the person in order to please them in the ways that they like to be pleased it is not a selfish thing and that just goes into being a good partner overall because you are considerate about what someone likes what they don't like their boundaries to some of my experiences from age 22 till now being in about three serious relationships the rest are just kind of hookups or whatever I was able to use what I learned last time about what they didn't like and what I didn't like and transfer it and just kind of develop different techniques and experiences. One thing that a lot of us do not take into consideration is how important it is to be in condition, athletic in a little bit of a way, or at least know how to transfer body weight on your hands, on your feet, and all of that connects to working out. And that's why I work out so much. I've also been a trainer, a mobility trainer, and I also dance now. So when you put yourself in a position to be in a career Career as well as make it your lifestyle where it's very physical and you have to learn a lot about your body and continually learn how to 
use your body better. It's only right that everything you do in the bedroom is going to get better. Not only is it important to be physical, but it's also important to be knowledgeable. If you understand what's going on down there, what parts are can be sensitive, how to activate and turn on certain parts, how to use different objects and tools with your own body as well as outside things in your own household or things you can buy to please the person even more, it is vast. So education, physical ability, experience and I think one of the most important things that a lot of people don't talk about is the environment and the energy that goes into your experiences there's ambient light there's music in some capacity that matches the mood that we're feeling it has to be very intimate and comfortable for me to be comfortable let alone another woman to be comfortable too and I know most women enjoy that unless you want a different vibe. Knowing that it can be awkward and knowing that things can get messed up are always going to happen. So let it happen and don't make it a thing. Just keep going, just let it go, laugh it off. You should be able to laugh during this. So let's dive into some education on how to please someone and make them feel comfortable physically. Now this is different for everybody, but in general, using your hand as something that can guide and touch. When you're doing any type of dance or you're working out, it is equally important to hit something hard and fast as it is to be able to control that movement. So if I'm touching and I'm grabbing with my finger fingers like this. I mean, that can that can work fine, especially if you're trying to grab on some nails, you're really trying to dig in there. That's different. But when you're starting off and you're trying to be sensual, brace with your arm. So you're pulling here and this part of your hand is loose, is able to just move wherever your arm is moving, right? And that feels the best. And that's when they feel like, oh, you're touching me with intention and it gives people shivers. And as someone who likes to touch, it just makes me feel really good, you know what I mean? I just like how it feels, how skin feels, how curves feel, how their reactions are changing, their breath is changing. Whatever you're using to pull or use, there are different parts that have to be braced and used in order to let the other part glide and be smooth. Smoothness is the biggest key. Don't forget about the neck, the ears, the head, if they have hair you can grab onto, grab it real quick. Go from smooth to hard really fast. Grab their face real quick and then glide back down. If you are grabbing a neck and you're trying to choke somebody in a, in a sensual way and it's not anything else, choking somebody for real for real is when you're pressing this part and you're choking somebody not for real, you don't let this part hit this part. You just grab around, pull it this way inward together as hard as you can. So this doesn't ever touch, you're just grabbing, right? And you can, push it forward or back, just try not to do any of this, right? And the harder you can go and they like it, the more it's gonna get intense. The grabbing muscles in your hand extend from this part of your form. So if you feel like you can't do much, start get grabbing those tennis balls, those, those uh, yoga balls, all the things, the clampers, grip bars in the gym, hold yourself, work on your forearm strength if you feel like you're not strong enough. And that goes for a lot of things when it comes to your fingers and your hands. You're doing some moving, you're touching. Everybody knows that most women's things are sensitive, you know, these little things can be more sensitive too. I personally don't really enjoy it. I don't really think it really turns me on. That's actually a lot of women is kind of like just whatever. But there are some women who have extra sensitive and it doesn't feel good or extra sensitive and it feels really good um, to the point where like that oh, they only need that type of sensation and then they can get off from that. But what I have noticed overall that works almost every single time is even if it doesn't matter the size, if you grab from under and up and you push it up a little bit and you have a good scoop on it, either hand, both hands, all the hands, your mouth, whatever, Get a good handful. Like when you make a part feel bigger than it is, it turns them on. It, it, just, just trust me, and especially the butt. You know, you get on and you grab from under, make your hand as big as you can, you grab it. So what I like to do, instead of asking, I find out by that type of analyzation. I'm trying to get to know what's turning you on. I'm touching, seeing how your breath changes based on where I am. Building up a sensation is super important in my book because it gives women more than just what it is. It gives them an experience. It gives them something to remember. And the mentality for women is 10 times more important than what actually is physically going on. When I use my mouth, sometimes I won't actually use it. I'll kind of just like glide. So I'll use my mouth and I won't actually like get there yet. I might even use my lips and kind of like let it like 
glide a little bit. If you have them just laying down, you can get on top real quick. You can get closer. You can bend down, get in their ear a little bit, say a little something with a very slow, light voice, nothing crazy. Just talking them through like, you like that? How's this feeling? You feel good? Because those little things show them that you're confident and you're also considerate. And that turns them on even more. So by the time you get to that point, they are dripping, okay? And it's the most satisfying thing when you finally get there and you, and you notice that because you didn't even do anything down there yet and you were able to get them there. I personally don't like when somebody starts here and just jumps right down there or they just start there. I personally like it when they take their time. So that's why I also give that same courtesy to them. So say you're about to go down on them, you're both ready. These are the most important things when it comes to this where you're gripping, mouth control and positioning, making sure you're aware of their body language at all times, and also enjoy it yourself. So when I'm down there and say they're just laying on their back, their legs are up, I really like to grab their thighs, and that way I have either my hands like this or I'm locked in real tight, and you can pull them in real quick. If you get really into it, you can turn them to the side, you can flip them around. I like to use my hands in different positions to grab, squeeze. You can usually reach all the way up to about this area depending on the person. I also like to have my body in a position where my neck isn't too strained and for someone who has jaw problems I need to be comfortable and in my sniper position in order to perform at my top ability. Most people don't mind if you have to adjust like just adjust until you feel good so that you'll be able to perform at your best. That the most important way to strengthen your neck, your tongue, is to do certain exercises in the gym. So neck movements where you have to use this side to side. You can use a weight at the end of a bench. You can learn how to retract your head. Your spine is super strong. And if you're able to know how to contract it to a point where you're stiff, if you're in this position, that's why I like to also be in this position because I'm locked in like a plank and my back is contracted, my shoulders are contracted. My neck can be in a better position for it to move smoothly. All the movements should be happening when you're down there. You shouldn't just be straight on. Now tips on using your tongue, huge tip. Make sure if you take these notes and you put it down correctly and it works for you, you come back and you tell me. A lot of women like to use their tongue in a pointy manner. This is gonna sound so dumb, but I see so many women that be taking videos like, with this little tongue. And that, that tells me usually a lot of the time that a lot of y'all do that down there. When I tell you guys, 99% of us like it when it's fat, long, smooth, soft. Also remember that I mentioned anatomy, different sizes of that part down there. I'm not, I'm trying not to say all the words on this to keep it PG, but that part down there can be many sizes. It can be this small, it could be this small, it could be this big. The bigger it is, the more surface area. The more surface area, that means those nerve endings and everything about it is spread out. It is not as sensitive. Therefore, it is going to take a lot longer for that to get to a point of the smaller it is, if it's harder to find for you, try to stay away from it. Try to not touch it directly at all. Do you hear me? Take these notes down. I wanna see your notepad out. Before I even take my tongue out or I'm kissing or anything, I am just around the area, using my lips to graze or my hand to graze, see where their sensitive parts are. Now when I'm able to be there for a second, then you can start kissing around. Kissing properly for most people and how they enjoy it is not poking your tongue in there, is not pecking or smashing your face on the person. It is not rough. You can really latch on there and then you're able to smooth it out with a harder contact. You know, mouths can't be like this unless you're doing like a quick little peck. If you're trying to make out with the person, you gotta turn your head. Both people have to turn their head the opposite ways. When you make proper contact, then you can use the secondary part of your mouth, the tongue, and glide it in there, and that person can do the same. If you're gliding in there and you're doing this, you're colliding and you're going, no. One goes over and under or goes around it. You're, it's, it's almost like a dance. You're just trying to find the empty spaces and you don't stay in there and you do this. I've experienced, oh my God. Just get in, get out, get in, get out. Switch it, get in, get out. Close the lips, open the lips. You push with your head first, your jaw opens, your mouth opens. 
your tongue follows. It's smooth, it's moving how the body moves. So keeping that in mind when you're down there, same concept. It is not different from when you're kissing regular face lips. It is lips and I like to really use the advantage of the fact that they're not moving lips and you're the only moving lips. Therefore you can position your head in certain ways that will get different angles of it. And also is a sexy angle for them watching. When you are turning your head and you are kissing on it, they can see all this. And if you're giving them a good view on top of a good performance, you're giving them a show. And I'm just someone who really enjoys doing it. So I'm just gonna show you how much I enjoy doing it. And you're gonna enjoy seeing how much I enjoy it and enjoy it because it physically feels so good. So we're kissing, now the tongue is starting to come in. The tongue will get tired especially if you're down there for a minute. The way to bypass the tongue and the way to do, especially this movement where there's a lot of waves happening, a lot of people can't do that without something to push against. You're coming in like the tongue down and instead of flicking it, you're letting the pressure from your head and your jaw push in and then glide it up and you're using your jaw to move upward, right? So you don't lift your tongue off of your jaw, you let it stay on your lips and your jaw. Now your tongue is getting that extra assistance and because of the pressure of the wall, it's able to glide smoothly down. Don't put more pressure on the tip of your tongue. Leave that as soft and as wide as possible. Try to put all the pressure in the back of your tongue and let the front be smooth. And when you're going back down, you're using your head to push the top down. So you're using your jaw to push it up, your head to push it down. Don't forget to salivate. Try to constantly salivate in your mouth and let it free flow so that way it is wet. Even if it's she's not wet, you can make it wet from your own mouth. Hiding your teeth, letting your lips be soft as well. So it's not just your tongue that is putting pressure on, it's the bottom and the top lip gliding as well. So you have three points of pressure. And let's point out the anatomy again. You can glide, you can slide, you can suck, and you can go faster as a glide too. The way to do that, and here's a trick, is to Put the tip of your tongue into the bottom of your teeth, the back of your bottom of your teeth, and then, so you don't have to worry about the tip ruining it, and you don't have to worry about too much pressure. I'm, I'm gonna keep naming some things. We also mentioned sucking. Like men and how they like it, women like it the same way. Just think of it as a very small one. It is not only this part, right? This is just the tip of the part. The rest of the part is back here inside, right? Which means that everything that's surrounding it, the, these areas surrounding it are also sensitive. That all can be grabbed onto. Like this, that first half of it can all be grabbed onto. And for me personally, Top tier. And from my personal experience, that has never failed me. Head position can be forward, it can be side, and then you can add the variations as you go. So I could be doing the gliding while sucking. I could be doing the sucking and then add gliding later after I get a certain part in my mouth. There's just levels to it. There's so many levels to it, right? The more that you can add on to what you're already doing, it'll always impress them because when they're so turned on, they won't even understand what you're really doing. They just feel amazing and they're just gonna keep letting it go. That's just the first half. The second half is the actual whole, that's where everything comes out, your mouth and your hands going at the same time devilish. You can add more to the other hole under it if you're really, really bold and they're really into it, but that's a whole nother story. I honestly like to get sideways if I'm doing that because then I have more leverage with my mouth as well as this action. Like you can do all types of things, but understand that only so much needs to be inserted and it can be smooth. It can be pulled. Women also like suction. Like I said, and say this is the thing you can use that to put pressure on it and kind of pull away. That feels good. You can also stretch the skin around it, down, forward, up, sideways, whatever. And that also goes for this first half. Like we were talking about with your hands, like try to use most of your hand, keep it smooth, use a lot of surface area. Like I talked about and and pull either up or push down or to go side to side or in circles by grabbing the entire thing. And the more pressure you put, a firm pressure with the motion works every time. And like I said, we're paying attention to their body language this whole time. We're making sure that they're enjoying it. They're not just laying there. The rule of thumb for me, based on what I'm doing and when to change, if they're not getting there and I've been doing something for about a minute, 30 seconds or more, and nothing has happened based on their body language, they don't change their breathing or moan or anything, then I'm moving on to something else. And I used to be too shy to say something, but I don't care anymore. And that's advice I would give anybody. If you feel like you wanna give them a shot, no, just guide them and be like, yo, do it like this. When somebody is really into it and they're doing it in a way that you know feels good, 
you know, but there's a lot of times where people are feeling like they're into it and they're really doing something, but I'm not moving. I haven't made a noise and you're over here having the time of your life. And that can be a very selfish thing that happens and a lot of people do that. And that is not okay. And it's not okay for us either to just sit there and let that happen. Like there's always room to do what you want to do, especially if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're not feeling it, your mood is off, your energy is off. We as women who love women don't need to fake no moans, as for the straights. So say that you're tired with the mouth, but you still want to keep going and you're inserted, right? You can get on your knees, on one leg, you can stand up, I don't know how where you're positioned at this point, and really, really get into it, especially if they're the type of person that can really handle it and they like that, and they like it rough. Put your opposite hand on the lower stomach, right above the pelvis where the bone is, like right above that part. Use your palm and your back and push into it and keep it strong. Put pressure there, not too hard, like you're really trying to crush them, but just give enough pressure and that'll close that muscle up and contract a little bit and that'll make this contact be even more aggressive and more sensitive and they will really really feel that. I don't know how many women loving women like to actually grind and get on top of each other with no clothes. I personally love it. I've been with many women who love it. I just think toys aren't always needed. Understanding how your pelvis moves is so important so that that is smooth and also understanding how important it is to breathe. Learn it, go to the gym, understand how to do Romanian deadlifts, how much hamstring flexibility you need in order for your pelvis to be turned all the way back and your butt to be out. Especially understanding that the top of your glute is the most vital part into keeping your pelvis pushed forward as hard as it can. You can get into angles that you never thought were possible. And especially if that person is able to do the same, Say there's not a lot of wetness down there, grab some coconut oil. The best natural lubricant you can use. We're gonna go lastly into the position of using the toy, um, harnessing. I'm not really gonna talk about the receiver, I'm gonna talk about the user. So make sure that you have something that is secure around you, using the coconut oil to lather it up. That's exactly how you start. You always wash it after and before. Keep it sanitized, keep it in a safe place. For example, let's dive into doggy. A lot of women have height differences. And if you're someone who's shorter doing the pleasing and you have it on, a lot of us have a very short ratio from our knees to our pelvis, okay? We don't have a lot of length there. Say that person has a longer length, they either have to spread really far for you to get a certain angle or they have to close their knees and then kind of sit on their ankles to give you a better angle too. If you're standing, it's so important to stay on the balls of your feet, grabbing with your toes, so that way you're not slipping around or you're not gonna lose your balance, which is very important in dancing. When you're dancing, is to stay on your toes. So say you're doing it, you're about to go in. I like to make sure that it's kind of warm. I just prefer to put the oil on and work in it until it gets to a certain temperature. The trick is, in order to not miss it, to use this hand as a guide, find it, and then pull it down a little bit so it opens up a little bit, and then you can slide it in. Don't just go in. Oh my goodness, please. Especially if you do something huge. Insert just a tip. And then you just go a little bit more, then you go a little bit more. And when you're using this toy, hip movement being smooth and slow is vital. The more you breathe, the better your body's gonna slow down. I do struggle sometimes with being shaky, but I realize it's because I'm not breathing that much. Don't go to pound town. Be able to hit it, but also in a motion that is smooth and usually in this motion, where you're going down and up with your hips, your body. You know what I'm saying? You're going down as you insert up as you pull out. If you can't do that much waviness, smoothness, just slow it down at least. Take your time and build your way up to that point. When it's not your body pushing forward and it's just the isolation of your hips that is pushing, that will blow their mind and feel the best. So that goes for every position, even if you're on your back, you're laying down and they're doing the work. I like to kind of squeeze my heels together and push my legs out so that I have some type of movement upward. We're kind of in a swinging position. I can use this to brace their body a little bit tighter and I can kind of position and pull them in a direction that's gonna help the rhythm, kind of guide them. Pressure point my fingers in a way that's gonna help them realize like, oh, some women have difficulty understanding how to move their body in a certain way. And if they can't do that at all, that's fine. But sometimes they just need a little guidance, they need a little help. There's a lot, there's a lot, there's so much. I can't even, t I can't even get into all of it. Woo! So the overall summary you guys need to take away from this is understand being smooth and fast or whatever way they like it can be the most mind boggling experiences for this person. When you're considerate, you're understanding, you're taking your time, you're building the momentum up, 
you're taking breaks, you're laughing, you're not taking it too serious. And for doing all the general things that I'm telling you here, you can push it into what you have going on personally and adjust it to those situations. General exercises that will help you. Planks, not only just standing there, but getting on your hands, back on your elbows. Keeping your body stiff, the rest of your body. This can move, but the rest of your body has to be stiff. It can't be swaying, right? That's where that bracing comes in. Push-ups, obviously, all positions. Wide, close, one hand out, one hand in. Um, dumbbells to get extra depth. Lots of hip thrusts, understanding that your pelvis isn't fully contracted unless your butt is completely forward and you're flat like a tabletop. Doing full depth squats, doing half depth squats, holding squats, doing hip exercises to strengthen your hips. Most of the exercises we do transfer into the bedrooms. It's not necessary, but it definitely helps and that's why I always encourage and push people to get into fitness. And then once you get those basics down, you have a really good connection there, you can expand with different toys, different positions, different environments, different scenarios, and just be vocal. Don't be like me. If you haven't experienced it before and you want to, be vocal about that and I guarantee you that person will be understanding about it. If they're not, time to go. Go ahead and tell me what you think in the comments. If you really agree or you disagree or you have other tips you can give these people. I, there's so many other things I could have talked about but this is how general I can make it and as short as I can make it. These are some tips from your big gay sister. Go have some good safe times in the bedroom and tell me how it worked out for you. I love y'all. Peace.